they remembered nonetheless the ruin of Almaren, and they resolved that the like should not befall Valinor. Hi, this is the Folksy Friend. Let's talk Tolkien. To understand why the Valar hid their lands and essentially abandoned Middle-earth, there are a few things that we need to know. The first home of the Valar, Almaren, the Battle of the Powers, their war against Morgoth, and the creation of the sun and the moon, all of which I will go over here pretty briefly. I do have longer videos on those if you are interested. So to begin at the beginning, the very first dwelling of the Valar was called El Marin. It was essentially an island in the middle of a lake in what would become Middle Earth. At the time, it was really just one big landmass. Now, Melkor, the great evil, had already split from the Valar at this point, and to light the world, the remaining Valar had created two enormous lamps. So, one in the north, one in the south, and the Valar were in the middle, so the light would come in on them. Now, Melkor was hiding in the far north, kind of beyond the shadows of the lamps, and he had begun to poison the world through his malice and his evil. So as that poison spread forth, the Valar realized that he was lurking out there somewhere, and before they could go and try to find him, he sprung into action and destroyed the lamps. So he cast the world into darkness. After this, the Valar relocated to a new landmass that had formed after the falling of the lamps. The lamps were so huge that when they fell, they really broke apart the land. So the Valar moved to Amman. This was the land in the furthest west and it was cut off from the main part of the world by a sea. And they thought, okay, this is kind of removed. This place will be safe. They set up their home, they built their mansions, and they grew their orchards. And there they lived for thousands of years in peace. So in this new home, their new light source were the two trees of Valinor, Telpirion and Lorelin, the silver and the gold trees. And they lit up only really Amon, the in Middle-earth, which was only lit dimly by starlight, Melkor was still very much in charge, and it was there that the first elves awoke beside the Bay of Cuivienen. Melkor was the first to find them because he lived over there and kind of ruled over the lands, and he had already begun to torment the elves by the time the Valar realized the elves were there. Rome had been doing his usual hunting of evil creatures in Middle-earth, which he did from time to time, and he just, by chance, happened to come across the elves. Now, the whole point of the Valar, and really the entirety of Arda, the universe as a whole, was to be the habitat of the children of Iluvatar, the elves and the men. So, when the Valar found that the elves were awake, they thought, well, we've just kind of left them out there, Melkor is a problem that we have to deal with. And they waged a war against him called the Battle of the Powers. This war was so violent and vicious that it did a lot of damage to the world. It was after this that Melkor lost, that he was taken to Valinor, and then for three ages was imprisoned. And many of the elves also at this time went into Valinor, and they lived in peace under the light of the trees. However, similarly to the lamps, Melkor was then behind the death of the trees. Once the trees were dead and the entire world was kind of plunged back into darkness, lit only by the stars, we finally come to the creation of the sun and the moon. The Valar needed these new lights to not only be impervious to Melkor, so things that he could not destroy this time. They also wanted them to be powerful enough to kind of hinder any evil intent that he had, to make it more difficult for him to attack anyone in Middle-earth or just go about his usual evil self. Not only did the Valar want to give a fighting chance, really, to the elves that were in Middle-earth, they also knew that the men were out there somewhere. The humans were going to pop up soon. What they didn't know was that the humans actually awoke upon the first rising of the sun, but that is next week's video. 
When the first sun arose, Morgoth was completely shocked and horrified. He retreated inside his new fortress, which was Engband, that he had kind of reforged and rebuilt. He called all of his supporters inside because they also could not withstand the light. And then he sent out great reek and dark cloud to hide his land from the light. He could not get near to the sun. She was too bright and powerful and radiant. So he didn't even really try to attack her, but he did go after the moon. He sent spirits to attack the vessel of the moon, which was being led by the Maiar Tilion. And Tilion was able to defeat Morgoth's spirits, but seeing the attack on the moon made the Valar nervous. They thought back to their past, the lamps, the trees, all of the woe and heartache that Morgoth had caused them. And they decided that they would not allow their new home to be destroyed the way their first home was. So the first thing that the Valar did was take a look at the mountains that fenced Amon from the sea. This mountain range was called the Pelori, and it was naturally a very high mountain range, but the Valar rose it up even further. So the jagged peaks were so high and the sides of the mountains so sheer that nothing could pass over them. The mountains were now essentially an impenetrable fence around Amon. There was only one way now in and out, and that was the Kalakiria. Now this was created originally so the elves that lived within Valinor could still see out into the starlight and could still have access to the sea. If they had closed this gap, the elves that lived in Amon, in Valinor, and near the Valar would have suffered for it because they still needed to look out into the sea and to breathe the air of their homeland, essentially. Plus, there were some elves that lived outside the mountains. The Teliri lived on the coast, outside of the fence of the Pelori. So if that gap had been closed, the Teliri would have been completely shut off from their friends and families inside the mountain range. So that was kept open. However, it was fortified. Towers and guards were placed throughout this gap and it was so heavily watched that no one, not even an ant, could get into Valinor without someone knowing. Not only that, but outside of the Kalakiria, there was also set enchantments in the seas themselves. So not only could you not get through the pass, but you couldn't even get to the land. The enchanted isles were set, and all the seas about them were filled with shadows and bewilderment. These islands acted as a kind of net, and the enchantments caught any ship that tried to sail a little too close to Valinor. If your ship got close enough to the enchantments, the sailors would be filled with a terrible dread. If they kept going, the waves would become so ferocious that the ship was likely to be dashed apart on rocks that were hidden among the isles. And let's just say you still managed to get through that. If a ship was able to get close enough to land on the enchanted isles, Anyone who stepped foot on the land would immediately fall asleep and essentially be trapped there until the changing of the world. So there was no way to get from Middle-earth to Valinor. As the Valar had warned the elves that rebelled against them and left Valinor, the way back was shut against them and there would be no returning. They in essence abandoned anyone outside of their homeland including the elves who had done nothing against them, and the men who were, in all honesty, as innocent as newborn babies. The Valod were supposed to care for them as much as they did the elves, but they turned their back. They shut their eyes and their ears, and no help came from them. The sun and the moon were kind of their parting gift, you could say, to kind of help anyone still out there in Middle-earth. Tolkien does tell us the reason that the Valar decided not to engage in war with Melkor again on Middle-earth after he had destroyed the two trees was because of two reasons, really. One, the first battle was so violent that it broke apart the land and did so much damage to it that the only reason the elves hadn't been harmed was because they were all in one place and they could be protected. Now, the elves were everywhere, spread throughout Middle-earth, 
If the Valar were to wage war against Morgoth once again, they would undoubtedly kill many. In addition, they knew that the men were going to be weaker than the elves, and they still didn't know where the men were, or even that they'd woken up yet. They thought that if they were to wage war against Morgoth, they would undoubtedly harm the humans, who didn't really have a fighting chance of surviving anything that violent. But instead of trying to maybe find ways to assist the men or the elves that had done no wrong, messengers, carrier pigeons, anything, instead of having any line of communication or attempt at support, they just shut themselves away. The only Vala who really tried to do anything to help those in Middle-earth was Ulmo. Ulmo, through his connections to waters, was able to keep an eye on things over there, to bring information over to the Valar, who didn't usually do anything about it, but Ulmo himself did try to help where he could. Nevertheless, Valinor itself was really out of the picture, and it would be many thousands of years before anyone from Middle-earth stepped foot on that land again. And that person would be Arendil, the greatest of all mariners, and the father of Elrond and Elbros. In the Book of Lost Tales, Volume 1, which is the first book in the histories of Middle-earth, we do have some information on an original draft of the hiding of Valinor, and some things are different, including a disagreement among the Valar as to whether or not they should shut themselves away. But that, again, was an earlier draft than what ended up in the Silmarillion. If you are interested in hearing anything about that, let me know. Maybe I'll make a video on it. But that is where I'm going to end things today. Next week, we're going to talk about the first men to awake in Middle-earth. I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me here. And I will see you next time.